court stops Ondo State Assembly from impeaching Aie Datiwa. And Serap sues the federal government and state governors on retirement benefits. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. A federal high court in Abuja has restrained the Ondo State House of Assembly from impeaching Lucky Ayedatiwa, the deputy governor of the state, on the grounds of alleged misconduct while in office as acting governor. The judge also restrained Rosimia Keridolu, governor of Ondo State, from nominating a new deputy governor and an interim injunction on him and his privies from preventing Ayedatiwa from carrying out his functions. Uh, the functions of his office as Deputy Governor of Ondo State. Joining me to discuss this is Olufemi Lawson. He's the Executive Director, Center for Public Accountability, CPA. Thank you so much, Mr. Lawson, for joining us. Good evening. Good evening. How are you today? I'm great. Um, this is not the first time that we're experiencing a tussle between a governor and his deputy. I mean, as we speak... Uh, Edo State is experiencing its fair share of governor versus deputy governor drama. But what exactly do you think is playing out here in this instance? Well, what is, uh, good evening once again. What is happening in Odo State is a bit different from the scenario in Edo State because majorly, as we speak, there has been nothing attributed to the dispute between the Edo State governor and the and his deputy, other than the situations around the fact that the deputy governor has an ambition of contesting the forthcoming election to succeed his uh, principal, the governor, that causing ripples. But in the case of Ondo State, at no time, as we speak, as the deputy governor, Mr. Loki Aedatua, declared or expressed his intention to succeed Dr. Kredolu. While it is visibly clear that the dispute in Edo is between you know, Deputy Governor Felix Shuaibu and Governor Gordon Abaseki, in the case of Fondo State, the scenario on our hands is a situation between Deputy Governor Lucky Ayedatiwa and some very few individuals who have constituted themselves into a cabal who have hijacked leadership in those states and are now operating, exploiting the you know, current health condition of our governor to destabilize the political atmosphere in those states. So unlike Edo, where the governor seems to be giving order to challenge the deputy governor in those states, Governor Kedalu is not at the center of this scenario, Governor Gerardo has not been seen to be making statements or issuing directives against the deputy governor from the state, but rather, a very few people who have exploited the health situation of Governor Gerardo are, as, of course, close to the family of the governor, and of course, its inner circle, are the ones behind the impeachment plot of deputy governor Loki Aida and that is why we have, we as Ondo State people, see this as a plot by a very, you know, minute and very significant minority who have access to power to destabilize the political atmosphere in Ondo State. Uh, again, I mean, to, 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 to say what you've just said, you're saying the governor's handwriting is nowhere to be found on the wall. He's not even speaking about it. And it's public that... I mean, we know that the governor has been battling with his health. Um, um, and many have even said, many pundits have said, um, it's because of a fear of sorts that Governor Akeridolu has sh cut short his stay abroad to come back to hold on to his office. But that could also be, you know, just a bias statement. But when you say he's, he's not involved in this, we all know that straight across this country, uh, in states, this, the houses of assembly, half the time, are in cahoots with the governor for everything. Most of the time, rubber stamp. And even if the governor may not be saying anything, could it be that these people are acting to save the governor and, you know, leaving him out of it so that it doesn't look like he's personally um, behind this? 
what, what I said, and why I want to insist that Dr. Kerry may not have been actively involved in the current plot is because it is in the public glare that since Dr. Kerry you know, purportedly returned to the country to resume his position as the governor of Fondo State, beyond the time that uh, some members of the House of Assembly went to have dinner with him in Ibadan, and he purportedly handed over his resumption letter to them, Governor Kerelu has at no time as he speak, you know, reported in Akure, the Ondo State capital, as the governor of Ondo State upon resumption. The truth is that, as we speak, there are clear-cut indicators that Governor Kerelu is not yet, you know, fully, you know, in the state or in the capacity to resume his position as a governor. And that is why persons around the governor have continued to exploit the health situation of the governor to create the current scenario we are seeing in Ondo State. If Governor Kerelu has fully resumed, as expected, and has resumed the duty of the governor of Ondo State in Alagbaka, where the seat of power at the capital of Ondo State is domiciled, one would have been able to read from his body language or his commitment or statement, its disposition to the current you know, charge being embarked upon by the Ondo State House of Assembly. But I want to insist that Governor Kredolu is not yet you know, in the physical you know, capacity, even just recuperating from a very long medical holiday, to embark on such an exercise, such as in, you know, instigating impeachment against his deputy, especially for a man who had fought for him while he was away. Mr. Lockyer that were stood you know, in place of the governor and showed that activities you know, were running and on those days was not completely shut down. Left to these characters who are pushing for impeachment today, on those days would have been completely shut down when the governor went on medical holiday. And that's why I want to insist, or oh, except when the governor openly expressed his lack of confidence in his deputy, who was his peer on the ticket that produced the APC victory in that election, I would not want to believe that Governor Crowley is part of this. Mm. I, want to, I want to show you something. The people of Elijah community are here, went on a protest. Mr. Lawson, just to take your mind back to what we saw in that video, the Elijah community members are saying, don't tamper with our mandate. Um, let there be peace. This can be sorted out. We want peace and harmony. But then a group of lawmakers, or former lawmakers of all those states, have also come out to make some interesting statements, and that's what I want to point out to you. They are saying that they hope that the 10th Assembly um, would have threaded with caution, that, that they would have, you know, gone on the side of, you know, um, unbiasedness, for the want of a better way to describe it. He also, one of the speakers also talked about the fact that they should have chosen decency. Um, he also said something about the fact that they need to avoid a state of chaos. Again, this it points to the fact that there seems to be an agreement within the House for a majority to carry a vote to impeach the, dep the deputy governor of a state. And that this, again, has so much of internal party politics written all over it. Again, I ask you, are you certain that the governor has no hand in this? First and foremost, let me say this. The deputy governor, Mr. Lokia that you are, though from Ilaje, is not the deputy governor of Ilaje, is the deputy governor of Ondo State. I am from Ode really, in the local government area of Ondo State. I remain consistently opposed to the illegal attempt at removing the deputy governor. Give it to the larger people for the purpose of the fact that, you know, they are having the deputy governorship slot coming to them, you know, and they have the right to protect it. But let me say this, Mr. Lokiae Datiwa is not the deputy governor representing Elaje in this cabinet. In actual fact, if Mr. Lawyer Kiai that you are, had not been on the ticket of the All Progressive Congress of that election, our governor would not have been qualified to contest the election. 
Because what the constitutional, the constitutional Nigeria recognizes is the fact that irrespective of your popularity, your competence, your qualification, or whatever, no one is qualified to aspire for the position of the governor without having a running mate. Therefore, Mr. Loki Aida Tiwa becomes the deputy governor on the basis of the decision of the All Progressive Congress to pair him to fulfill the constitutional mandate requirement for the APC to contest the governorship election in the member state. So, God, Mr. Loki Aida Tiwa is the deputy governor of Ondo State, the deputy governor of the larger people, our boy, our Koko, Ikale, all of us, our war, our Kure, and the likes in Ondo State. So it is enough, it is good that the Elijah people are protecting their son. But it's beyond that. But I want to insist that if you look at every tendencies that seek to be trying to remove Mr. Lokiai that you are, they are not representing the opinion of the law, the vast majority of those state people. You know, you know, you know, presented the visuals of members of the last assembly. These are people who represented the various constituencies in those in the state in the last assembly. We have groups that have represented various constituencies. Ondo Redemption Front have represented various in Ondo Redemption. We have the Lajer, the Kale, Apoy, and the like. It is you understand. So even the, in the assembly, not every members of the Ondo State House of Assembly as representing the various local governments have committed themselves to the move to impeach Deputy Governor Aida Tiwa. And that is why for us, we insist that this is an attempt by a very insignificant few who have considered themselves to a cabal exploiting the ill health of Governor Rotina Kailulu to initiate this impeachment move. And that is why, as I speak to you, the vast majority of Ondo State people are opposed to this. If you go to Ondo State today, the reality on the street is that any attempt to remove Mr. Loki that you are as the governor, deputy governor of Ondo State will spell discordance, will spell anarchy and disobedience. And that's why we are in prevailing and insisting that the House of Honor is restrained instead and stop this illegal move to remove the deputy governor. Interesting. Um Somebody has had asked if there was some sort of discordance within the party. How is the, um, what is the health of the APC in Omdo State? Are there factions? And, and the members of the State House of Assembly keep making mention of the fact that he had committed some sort of a misconduct while he was acting governor. But then the question is, what is this misconduct that was committed? There's some, there are a few um, lawyers who've also posited that the deputy governor is wrong for suing almost everybody in the state, the governor, the chief judge, the members of the House of Assembly, that he should not have gone that route. But what are your thoughts? Whatever the deputy governor has gone to the court to do today is very much in tandem with his constitutional right. And rather than taking the road of those characters who are using the House of Assembly to get him out of office today, the deputy governor have taken the option of the law, using the instrumentality of the law to challenge the illegal attempt to get him out of office. In actual fact, by now, I think the House of Assembly members and other people in the camp of those who are trying to sack Mr. Loki should be commenting, commending the deputy governor because if it had been some other persons, especially those who are behind this plot, a lot of them were promoted anarchy and would have instigated violence. What Deputy Governor De Ayrat was done by going to the court should be commended because this is a man from all indication that believes in the rule of law, the legitimacy of our constitution, and the fact that we must not resort to self help. If Mr. Ayrat I think that we um, had a slight... Okay, we lost um, that connection for a second, but go ahead, please. The truth is that if Mr. Loki had that you are, have attempted to resort to self help on those days would have been in trauma today. But he has gone to court just because he believes so much in the fact that we must follow the rule of law and due process. What those 
who are trying to impeach Mr. the deputy governor are attempting to you do is to exploit illegal means. Let me give you an instance. The senior special assistant to Governor Rotimi Akeyedelu, a supposed lawyer and a former university lecturer, has on here advocated the Adedugu option. I mean the option that was used to sack former Governor Rashid Ladoja as governor of Ondo State, uh, your state, in this case. It means that these people are just desperate to get Mr. Loki Adeya to her out, not minding the approach. But as the people of Ondo State, the state of Parmaike Adekule Ajashi, we will not encourage lawlessness, we will not encourage arbitrariness, and that is why whatever has to be done by the House of Assembly, the party or stakeholders must follow due process. And let me appreciate the All Progressive Congress in Mondo State at this moment. It is on record that as we speak, the Ondo State APC have not you know, exhibited any tendency to support this illegal attempt by the Assembly to remove the Deputy Governor of Ondo State. As I speak to you, stakeholders in Ondo State converge in, uh, in Abuja this evening and have passed a strong resolution that will be sent to the national leadership of the APC mm -hmm. and the President tomorrow. Because it is about Ondo State. It's not about these few, very few desperate individuals who are pushing, you know, for a state of anarchy in our state. And that is why we must commend the deputy governor for approaching the court. Again, he is the deputy governor. All I hear is a few people are trying to cause mayhem. A few people are trying to cause a state of anarchy. But there is a governor. Why is the governor silent on this matter? In all of this, he should speak. If he's not in support of what's happening, shouldn't he be speaking? And if he is in support, then maybe silence, his silence can be read as into the fact that maybe he does support it and he wants the man out. So I ask again, why is the governor not speaking? Because he has the power. I'm saying, he doesn't he have the power to put an end to this. For us as all those people, we are even more worried that since our governor you know, purportedly returned from his medical leave, I, I can challenge you that Mr. Governor has not even addressed the people of Ondo State for five minutes. Yeah. I mean just five minutes, not even through a telecast or a visual interview. The fact that Mr. Governor has not even spoke, spoken rather, through even the social media or the radio in Ondo State for five minutes to tell us that he's back calls for concern. Yeah. For me, I strongly believe that these people have desperately brought Mr. Governor back from his medical leave to come and perpetrate this illegality. And it is on record that since Mr. Governor came back and purportedly you know, resumed office to draw in his letter granting Mr. Loki Aida to her the mandate of acting as his replacement, acting governor. And Mr. Governor has not spoken to the people of the state. Mr. Governor has not you know, addressed any issue including the suffering of our people, thoughtless of addressing the issue of impeachment. I want to strongly believe that these people, in their desperation, smuggled Dr. Gary Rolu back to Nigeria, and that is why Mr. Gondor has not been able to address this issue. Mm. Again, and I don't want to sound like um, a, a, a Debbie Downer, but the governor is in ill health, and his state is in a state of limbo. Um, members of his House of Assembly are trying to impeach his deputy governor. That house seems to be already a chaotic house. What does this mean for Ondo State people, the people who voted for the, the governor? Well, for us as Ondo State people, we are peculiar people. We are not a people that has ever been captured. And we, and, you know, we appreciate the right of people to create you no know, comic relief for themselves, just like the Ondo State House of Assembly and the inner caucus of Dr. Kredulu are trying to create some comic relief for themselves. But for us as Ondo State people, we will not you know, entertain illegality, we will not allow illegitimacy, and we will not allow democracy to be slaughtered in our state. And that is why we consistently you know, remain on the path of due process, and whatever has to be done, but finally, if, God, if that you are, is found wanting, 
legitimately in the course of the discharge of his responsibilities as a state governor, a deputy governor, we will rally behind the assembly to remove him. Finally, before I let you go, um, the, the, the government, I mean, the administration is just kicking off. There's a lot that needs to be done for on those uh, state people. I'm sure that the Governor Kerry Delu did have a long list of plans and promises that he made to the people of Ondo State. With all of this drama, including his ill health, does this not distract from the people of Ondo State getting the dividends of democracy? I understand that you say, oh, you're great, you guys have a great sense of humor, but that does not put food on the table. That does not give you infrastructural development. That does not in any way deliver the dividends of democracy to the people who voted for the governor, does it? It is very sad then for us as Ondo State people. And let me apologetically state this, that as someone who also supported the re-election of Governor Kerry Dodo, I want to state this, that in the last five days I've been in Ondo State. I have been in Ondo State since Saturday, and I can tell you that fundamentally there is an absence of government, government, governance rather in Ondo State. I know the passion Governor Kerry Dodo came with to govern on those states during his first time. I also understand what Governor Craig Dolly intended for on those states when he was re-elected for a second term as the governor. I was practically on the ground, just like so many other people from those states. But unfortunately, the health condition of Mr. Governor has not allowed him to you know, undertake his ambitions, his dream for all those states. But the fact that the governors has to continue. As I was, as, as I speak to you, by the time I was traveling from my hometown to Akure for the eight hours ago, it was a hell of a trip. A journey that used to be about one hour twenty minutes took about three four hours. It tells you that governance is practically on holiday because a group of people have not allowed institutions and individuals who should be running the government in the absence of the government to do their duties. And as we speak, the governors in Ondo State have been hijacked by people who are not elected. People who were merely appointed by Governor Akeredolu from, from Remo, from other parts of the, of, of the country, to come and assist him. They have hijacked leadership in Ondo State. Mm -hmm. And that is why we must return to the part of governance and let Governor Akeredolu to fully recuperate. Mm -hmm. We are praying for the governor. We are supporting him. We continue to wish him well. But let these desperate individuals allow governance to run. Mm. We want Dr. Kerry to return okay. into his full capacity. That, that very radical, you know, committed governor. Okay. That governor who was protecting the interests of our people. That governor who was protecting our people from the invasion of the earthmen and militia. We want that governor who was providing policy for our people. Not the governor who will be kept in the bedroom in Ibadan. And some people who are no mandate of our people will be imposing you know, leadership on our state okay. and prevent okay. his deputy, the legitimate authority from governing in other states. That is his deputy. They should stop this impeachment move. It is not popular, and on those state people will reject it. All right, I want to say thank you. Um, Olufemi Lawson, um, we thank you so much for being here. He is Executive Director, Center for Public and Accountability, CPA. Um, well, this is hoping that Ondo State gets the dividends of democracy sometime soon. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, Serap has actually sued the federal government and state governors on their retirement for life. These benefits, they say, are unlawful and needs to be stopped. We'll be talking about this in a moment. Stay with us.